Hi, here is another tutorial with BlenderCam basics. This is the file I imported. Here you find BlenderCam in the user interface of Blender. On the right side you can check out the machining options, make presets, you can select output post processors for the files, decide if you want to split big files, then you can set the unit system to metric imperial or leave it on none. Then set some limits for your mill. The object must be inside of this dotted cube. Normally when you import it it's way too big. You have to scale it down so that it fits the measurements of the cam machine option. You can auto align the object inside this cage. First select your object, make a new cam operation. I close all the folders here. So here is what we have set up. Here are all the options to calculate the path and output it, give it a file name. This is the object we want to operate on. Now on the material size and position, you can bring the object inside the cage. Just click on position direct, or if you want to leave a gap, adjust the radius around the model. Here you see it's perfectly aligned with the top. You can also choose to deepen your model down. So now we have to choose an operation. There are different operations. I usually work with parallel. Uh, you have to define a cutter diameter and make some decisions on how you want to mill your objects. So with parallel it will do the following. It goes in parallel lines and follows the surface of your model. And continue on to do so. The distance between the two paths is depending on the cutter diameter. So to work fast you can use bigger cutter diameters. To have more detail you have to go smaller. You can choose a ball end or an end mill, tool number settings, number of flutes. The distance between two paths, I have set it now for my 12mm. If you go really near with 0.1 millimeters it will make a narrow pass which doesn't really make sense for this project if you go really in the diameter already this is good for styrofoam where you can really cut fast through material you need much less passes to finish the milling process here you see the side by side of the milling bit that just overlaps and with the smaller distance between the two passes it just overlaps a lot. But this helps to get stress away from your mill bit if you have really accurate and filigree stuff to do. So always choose the correct sizing for your project so that you don't lose a lot of time and that the milling process makes sense. Then you have other algorithms, for example the block algorithm, you can start it in like a blocky manner and it goes just down in this spiral, push and cross, crisscrosses over the whole object. stuff to 
uh, Spyro, whatever. The most of them that you will need are pocket car for drill or the parallel one. The other ones I rarely use are only in special cases, but some of them are still experimental. So this is set up. You can also change the angle. This means the direction from where to where the mill goes to make a nice pattern on the surface. You can also leave a little skin if you want to uh, manufacture the model afterwards and need some more material that gets away afterwards, like for polishing. So everything seems all right. Now we have to make another decision. So my system is a bit slow, it's an iMac, so I have to reduce the accuracy of the calculation. I do this by setting the resolution of the uh, megapixel, two megapixels, and reduce the resolution for the raster. Normally I will, I will choose something in between to get a fast result, but it's still accurate. So the next thing, we can also step down in layers so that we don't take a lot of material at once. This is uh, the same, like the distance between tool paths discussed before. So it will go down in steps of one centimeter now until it reaches the bottom uh, of the surface or the top of the surface I want to mill. Um, I also can go all at once. So here again in detail to see what happens. You have your mill bit here. And then it starts on top of your stock material. And you can either go directly to the surface and the, all the passes will be calculated from for the top of the surfaces. Or you can also make in between stuff so like these layers that step down a specific amount to take less material at a time. Depending on your material you have to do that, for all metals for sure. Styrofoam is pretty forgiving. So you can also use limit curves to limit, uh, to have just the calculation for a specific part of your model. Uh, you can make a basic shape around the area you want to have this detail, then use this limit curve to limit the region that get milled. The cam movement, so this is um, the direction on how it will be milled. It can with climb only be milled in one direction, then the mill gets out and enters again where it started on one side. So this is obviously slow, but if you go for metal, you have to do that in this direction or in one direction to get a nicer surface. Uh, I always use meander because I mainly proceed, uh, proceed foams. foams. <laughs> so now we are pretty much done. Recheck the feed rate for your spindle. So choose what your machine can handle and your material, of course. Then you click on Calculate Pass, and after a short time of waiting, you will get the pass for your export. Since I clicked on auto export, it will automatically export the file named operation underscore one into the directory of where, from where I have opened this model to import. <laughs> if you don't find it, use a search engine on your computer. Sometimes it saves it on weird places, like in the Blender folder, depending on the system. 
at different results on Windows and Mac. So you export the G-code to make sure it's uh, gone. Open it in a text editor. Now you can check the feed rates to make sure that your machine and material can handle it and that you don't have made any mistakes. So this was pretty much it. Um, you can export this G-code with chili pepper. I will make another tutorial later on on this topic. My name is Daniel Bachmann. I wish you a pleasant day and Blender rocks.